how are you? Duck hunting season's upon us and you've got to be organised and that's why I'm travelling here in the Duck Hunter 2000 which is pretty much a uh, custom built duck uh, duck hunting vehicle we like to call it. It's important to know your gun and know it intimately. Uh, I've always used a Beretta, Italian gun, uh, Unico Extreme. Um, basic. You probably still get one shot out of that. Um, might not be able to reload it, but once you get the spring and everything back in there, obviously it becomes a, you can actually um, do more than, more than, more than the one shot. It really is great to be back here at the Waverley Gun Club, where it all began for me all those years ago. This is pretty much where I learned to shoot. Um, got a passion for, for guns and hunting, that kind of stuff began here. That's where it was cultivated. Okay, and this time of year, obviously with the duck shooting um, kicking off, it's a busy time, people coming here getting their iron. There'll be your uh, Sydney oh. radio guys come down on Friday night before duck shooting, yeah. just to get the iron. Yep. Some of them need it too. Yeah, yeah I noticed that before when we were out there. A couple of the guys didn't seem to be, you know, they were kind of all over the show, but oh. found I got my eye. I, 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 I must admit I fired a few more shots than I was um, ready to admit before I got my iron. But well, that's because I put my gun back together that fell apart in the van. And when I put it back together, I put the barrel on backwards, it had that B thing at the wrong end. And uh, once I popped it back over, I was, I, was, I was well in, got my iron and started hitting those, um, hitting those birds, yeah. There you go, hit one there, no problems. A uh, bit of practice makes perfect to get there in the end. Um, had a couple more shots um, than I wanted, to be honest, before I got there, but... Uh... Just goes to show you put the time in, you get the rewards. Boom! Boom! There you go, it doesn't always happen on the on the range there, come here, we've got, it's got us out, it's quite a nice little uh, pick here. Check this out, fellas. Yeah, I've got my eye on eventually. Smelt a pig behind me, turn around, nailed it, first shot. So, uh, as you well know, I've scored quite a few pigs in my time, but um, never on a gun range, if you know what I mean. Most of them are back at university. But, um, it's called a day, fellas. The old uh, Beretta, is uh, that the 460, is it? Uh, oh, no, A400. No. A400. Unico. Unico. Yeah. Uh, Quite light, long, um, runs with the... Beretta. Beretta, next four. Oh, nice. So um, that's pretty much the view, then, isn't it? You're, yeah, you're in the you're in the breach here. This is this is what you see um, through the eyes of a shooter. This is what you see. This is the eyes of the shooter. Yeah. Right here, right, right now. Yeah. And um, then you'll be starting your calls, um, bringing them in, um, trying to sort of uh, think like a duck, I suppose. You know, be get in the mind of the duck. Or is that overstating it? Well. Probably, yeah, good analogy, but I'd say the mind of an assailant, so you yeah. don't get shot. Okay, yes. okay. But you're bringing those ducks in, I mean the wind, you want that wind to be coming in, you want them to be flying into the wind, don't you? Correct, so you need the wind coming over your um, shooting hide, yes. Yeah, right over the shooting hide, yeah. they coming in, coming in, and then you basically, uh, you let you let go, you let rip down. Yeah, yeah, you lay down a bit of cover fire and um, hopefully pick up a few for your bag, yes. <laughs> Um, it's about camaraderie, really, isn't it? It is, and if you talk to a number of shooters, I mean, it's not about um, firing your gun. I mean, a lot of a lot of the guys that turn up here to be part of the day would rather chuck a snag on the barbie and run that and, and just be a, a kitchen hand. Fantastic. Any thoughts on that? No, not really, Lee, to be honest with you. Okay. Mm. Thank you. 
not casual, really. That was something I'll pull in LA. Um, for the Beretta shotgun, pictured here. You can see that fantastic gun, and that's what everyone's been um, going for, haven't they, all day today? Yeah. Also, want to say, I probably looked a little bit bedraggled early on when you first saw me here. That's uh, I wasn't going to say this because it kind of kills mum a bit, but, but my wife just had a baby about 45 minutes ago, baby boy. Uh, seven pounds. That's a big hand for that. Hey. Fantastic. Hey. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's bullshit. Just made that up. <laughs> just wanted to keep the good vibes going there for a little bit longer. What would I be doing here if she just had a baby, for God's sake? Are you stupid? Are you stupid? No, you're not. Um, I was going to talk about my hunting experience. I don't think we've really got time to go into that, but I mean, bit of background on me obviously i've done a lot of hunting um most of my hunting as i look around at the these animals up here has been big game stuff i go back to venezuela i did a hunting trip there i was um it's going back a, a fair way now no, but we were hunting this um a thing called the um el chancho blanco grande peligroso the spanish that basically means the large white dangerous pig okay so it's an albino pig with big tusks and stuff and we tracked that for good two or three days, I suppose. Um, think about these ones though in Venezuela, they, they are dangerous. They get a sniff of it, a sniff of you, they'll turn on you, and we became the hunted. So uh, my other guys, they pulled out, it was just me alone hunting this beast, tracking it, tracking it day after day. And uh, gone on dusk, I suppose, and through the bush there, saw the, the red of his eyes, and it charged me. Ran at me, straight line, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Well, you try and run, but it's too late. You know, I had nowhere to go. I was in a corner. It comes at me, it jumps up. Didn't even have time to get the gun. No time for that. Knife, straight out of the back. As it came down on me, pig stuck itself on the knife. I managed to roll over, stick it in there. Pretty scary stuff. And what happened then, obviously I stuck it, bled it, I skinned it. And I still have that skin today. And hopefully, the guys, if I, uh, you know, uh, this is a big call I was going to put in my own lodge, but um, maybe they can put it up in the wall. This is it here. <laughs> was, of course, a guinea pig, which is big in South America. They eat those things over there. Um, well, it's actually bigger than that. I had to sort of trim it down to get the legs and stuff off it. And uh, you can imagine. And it shrunk a bit in the washing machine as well. But you can imagine, imagine that, imagine that, a third bigger, all right? All over me, knifed it, stuck it, and there you go. So I'd be really honored if you guys could stick that up on the wall, perhaps next to that big pig over there. Oh, she's gone now. No, sorry. No, um, no. That's a, that's a joke, no. I mean, the one up on the wall there, just right up there. Pin it up, be a real honor. But without further ado, I think we should do this big draw. Okay, the winner is, there's only one. It is Mr. Barry Turner. Fantastic. I just want to say um, thanks to the guys here from uh, Wanganui um, Hunting and Fishing for getting me down and, and organizing this whole thing. Uh, it's been fantastic and big hand for them. What a great day they put on. Been bloody great the turnout. I think there's about 120 here at one stage. We had a count before, so it's bloody fantastic. Um, I just uh, wish you all the best for opening weekend uh, and keep it safe. And uh, we'll see you back in the store soon.